Hey guys, welcome to another Tutorial Tuesday. Um, so, you know, I was at GDC um, talking with some of the Microsoft people and, um, you know, talking about C++17. And Visual Studio 2017, which is what I'm on, um, supports C++17 like 100%. So, you know, part of this is, is my own engine, my own game engine that I'm working on, my own projects. Uh, they're officially on C++14, which is five years old now, kind of. And so C++14 is cool, um, and it has a lot of great stuff. It's really just an expansion of 11. You know, nothing major, just sort of fixes and, you know, makes stuff, makes stuff better. Uh, but C++17 is kind of the next, like, hey, there's some cool stuff here. Or, you know, I'm thinking about when, when do I switch over to C++17, you know, who knows. So anyway, in the next in the next several videos, I thought it might be fun to talk about um, some of these some of these features because there's some really cool stuff here. Um, you know, in one of these, you know, you can you can go to the sort of like this is just the Wikipedia page C plus plus seventeen, and it just has uh, like a basic list of things. So I'm like, you know, why don't we just start going, you know, down this list and start looking at a few of these things that I'm personally interested in and kind of excited about. Um, you know, very small, kind of, some of these things are very small. You know, removal of trigraphs, I don't think you're even going to notice this. Um, but, uh, you know, or unless you're working on cross-platform stuff, you may not even notice some of this, like, C++ stuff, or how many of you knew that the register, that register was actually even a keyword? Um, you know, this I haven't cared about the register keyword since, like, God, you know, the late 90s. Um, some of these library features are pretty cool. I have uh, EASTL, which is what I use for my STL implementation. It already has a lot of these as implementations, so I've already used, like, string view, and optional I use, you know, every now and then as well. So a lot of these things are already kind of here. Um, but the support is... It's pretty good. Um, it's, you know, here's the support. I don't know how recent this is. According to a um, an actual engineer and product manager for Visual Studio 2017 that I, you know, I, I didn't meet this person, but I met um, like a producer basically there as well as a couple engineers. Um, they were showing off a different feature set. Uh, but... Uh, they said, yes, you know, it's 100% C++17 compliant, or, is, you know, unless, you know, there might be one or two things or something, but basically all of the features are there. Um, this is almost all of C++17. I don't know what's missing. Clang supports it. Um, GCC supports it. Uh, so, you know, major compilers basically have supported it. So let's start talking about, so I don't know, I just want to go through some of it. We'll do this for, you know, a little series for a little little while. We'll start talking about some of these features. Today, I'm going to talk about two of them. Um, two, you know, in, in some order of excitement, I guess. Um, the first feature is going to be uh, compile time if statements. Oops. Let's. And then the second one is going to be, um, well, what is the actual thing? I don't actually know what they're called. What does this thing call them? This thing calls them initializers. Okay. Uh, initial, uh, initializers uh, in if and switch. These are the two we're going to talk about today. So let's take a brief tour of what these mean. A compile time if statement looks like this. Oh, before I forget, um, let's zoom this in. This is your project, right? You have some kind of project over here. And if you right click on the project itself, not the solution, you can go down to properties. This will bring you to this property sheet. Um, and it'll probably look something like this at first. And you'll need to go to C++, right? Open this guy up. Go to Language. And then here you'll see C++ Language Support. And you'll want to do all configurations, all platforms, probably. Um, so defaults to 14, if I just didn't have this set. 
but I can set it to 17 or latest. Latest is has some experimental 20 stuff in it probably. I don't actually know what it's in it, but it's like the absolute latest. So you have to, it doesn't default to 17. You have to set it to 17. So make sure you do that uh, if you're gonna play with any of these features. Okay. You know, a normal if statement looks like, you know, this. Um, and then, you know, you might have that thing here. You might have some, uh, true or whatever. So this is a regular if statement. This is a regular runtime if statement. This will create a branch in code and run your stuff. Right, I'll just I'll throw a couple things here. Right, so this 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 will show this will be a branch. Um, a compile time if statement looks like this. You just add const expression here. So now this is not going to compile because it's going to complain. Hey, this has to be constant. So in order to have a compile time if statement, it has to know how that if statement is going to happen at compile time. Now the easiest way to do that in our example is to Make this a compile time constant. Now foo can't change, right? But if I change it here at compile time, you can see like this guy's grayed out, this guy is not, right? If I set it back to true, like the gray out switches. And we could actually dig into this if we really wanted to. So if I just set a breakpoint here and I build this, and I set this breakpoint, and I just run this. And I do something really nuts, like switch to disassembly, and we dig in here and look at the actual disassembly of it all. So what we what we're seeing here is so this is this is all of our just setup for the function. Here is our actual C out. Notice that there's no branch whatsoever, so there's no jump. We just push the offset of, of the value of true, basically the string from the. Um, so we push that onto the stack. Um, we grab you know, C out as a thing, basic O stream character traits. And we push that on the EAX. And then we call the operator. So, it, and then we add ESP8 because it's C standard calling convention. And that's it. That's all we got. There's no branch, right? Because then down here, we're just bailing. We're calling pause. There's no branch at all. This false doesn't exist. It's completely compiled out. It's about as fast as you can get, right? It, it, no branch is the fastest branch. So that's really cool. Uh, of course, now this food can't change. So it's, it's nice for like, you know, basic uh, things like this, I guess. I don't know. This isn't really the use case for it. The use case for it, I think, mostly, is to get rid of uh, SFIFNA, which stands for Substitution Failure is Not an Error. Um, Swiftne is a horrifying syntax that allows you to conditionally compile in code, which is kind of what we're doing here. That's, that's very literally what we're doing here. Um, so, uh, oh, and incidentally, I also recognize that I could easily do some kind of like, you know, thing like this one and then have like pound if like I, I recognize I could do this with macros. This is not, this is a trivial example to show you just the syntax. Let's look at a real example. This is my own engine. This is circle.h, so it just defines a circle. That circle is a template um, value. The template value is um, generally some kind of simple primitive type. It is usually a number of some sort could be something else, but it's pretty much always a number. In fact, I think it has to be a number because I think this vector two will constrain it. Yeah, this vector two will constrain it. It has to be a trivial type specifically. Um, so, I should actually force that constraint right here. Um, Okay, so down here I have this, this is Swiftne right here. This is substitution failure is not an error. So the whole, you know, I don't, I don't want to go into how sort of nuts this can get, but um, here, let's do this new layer. But let's walk through it very briefly. We're not going to go too nuts into this. Um, okay, 
So basically, you have this sort of like you have sort of your own template, your own function template, which is required uh, for how enable if sort of works. This it just defaults to the class template type, which is almost always what you're going to use. Um, type name is pretty cool. It's sort of required. So basically, you have this enable if, which has the open here, and then the close is here. So open and close. So that's, you know, there's a lot going on in here. Inside of this, we have this EASTL is integer, which opens here. It's basically this whole thing is integral integral. And then the second parameter, which I'll do in red, so because they're similar is here. And then you can see the close. Um, and I'll just sort of line this up so that this is obvious, All right? I'll just sort of circle this here so that you can see that this is the enable if. Now, of course, this whole thing has this type because we're actually grabbing this type here. Oh God. Okay. So what's going on? Um, you know, I don't, I probably don't have time in this to go through all of this type name is just sort of a required thing. Um, but basically what's happening is. Enable if says if the first template parameter, this is integral thing or whatever, is true, then it will take um, the second parameter, which defaults to void for what it's worth, um, and essentially use that as the return type in this case. You know, it sort of equates to this. So it'll equate to this sort of red thing here. That's what colon colon type is. If not, it'll equate to nothing. It will not equate to anything at all which is a syntax error because you have to have some kind of return type or void. Um, but it's not because substitution failure, which is what happened there, is not an error. So it will silently fail and this function will simply be removed from the class. We have the exact same thing down here. Here's another one. This guy uh, is the same thing, but um, is floating point. So what happens is I have an integer version, version and a floating point version of this function. And it will pick and choose. If it's an integral type, it'll choose this one. If it's a floating point type, it'll choose this. If it's neither, then get bounding rect will simply not exist as a function on the circle. And I'll get a syntax error in the compiler. I'll get a compile time error if I pass in string or something and try and use it. Um, string is maybe a bad example, but a pointer type is not. So that's what this does. Okay. But it's terrible. So let's make it better. We can do that. If I don't care about the func type, which I don't, let's make this better. Ready? So what's our return type? Rect of whatever type is. This is just the class type, right? Up here. Um, get bounding rect const. So here's, here's our thing. If const expression, EASTL, is uh, integral, oh no, come back to me. Uh, I'll just copy this whole thing. Is integral. There we go. And actually, we don't need this stupid value thing because we can just do V. Um, we don't need func type because that's not a thing anymore. thing here I might explicitly say else if you know whatever um, but that's it this function is a hell of a lot easier to read right look at that it returns a rect of whatever type we're using so integer or float rect it's called get bounding box like here it is if const expression so if type is an integral type right it's an int of some kind then we do this, we have to do this rounding. And here it is. Otherwise, it's got to be a float because I'm sort of doing plain old data up here or trivial types, but I probably should say else if, actually, I actually don't know if I have to put const expression here. Good question. Um, you know, this might be better. Else if 
you know, this is floating point type. And this one I do have to do the value. EASTL doesn't support it. Right? Otherwise, if it's a floating point type, do this. Um, and I might say, you know, else return rect type, like an empty rect or something, right? It sort of doesn't matter. Here I might actually put a static assert. Like you can, you know, keep adding stuff, right? Um, where I might say this has to be this or this. Just, just, this is all compile time stuff. Right, so this becomes, you know, whatever, whatever sad face, right? This becomes a much easier function to read. If it's an integral type, here's the integer version. If it's an else if, it's a floating point type, here's the float version. Otherwise, that's it, here's the rec version. Like just, here's just, here's an error case, which is what we have. I could throw a runtime error or whatever I want here. Much, much easier than this which is not at all easy. Okay, that's it. Um, you know, uh, the other thing that I wanted to show, you know, I'm sort of running out of time, but uh, in a for loop, you can kind of do this. You know, i is less than 10, whatever, right? Plus plus i does stuff. Well, in C++11, you can do that with, uh, you know, You can do that if statements. This if will run every time. So it's maybe not useful. Um, but this could be. Um, how do I want to do this? So like, um, how about this? Oops. Uh, if care choice equals getch if oh not if uh, choice is equal to q then uh, you know send it out choice right or whatever like it can be kind of whatever you want uh, and I'll need I'll need choice in here. So let me comma yo. There we go. Right, so I'll, I'll kill this. Let's do this. So this is gonna do nothing if I hit, if I just hit a key, it's gonna do nothing. If I hit Q, it'll actually print out Q. You can see it here. So, um, you know, that's cool. Here's kind of the magic of that, right? Choice equals, you know, uh, E or something. This is going to fail. It doesn't know what this is. It follows the same rules as a for loop. In other words, the scope is inside of this if. But what about an else, you ask? Right? What if I do this? What if I do that? Will that work? I mean, you can tell by no squigglies that it totally will. So it stays alive for the is, is for the if else um, chain, but it goes away after that. Okay, so let's look at a practical example of this. This is this base sim again. This is an application.cpp, and I actually have it here at the top in my initialization function. Temp string reused in a number of different blocks. How lame. Um, here it's used, you know, and then I have to reset it to null pointer every time. This is stupid. Right, look at this. Better would be const care star p uh, temp string equals application settings do this thing. Semicolon, right? We can just write this, right? Much better would be uh, if const care star p stir whatever we want to call it equals like this whole thing p stir there we go 
This is going to complain, I guarantee. I'm actually surprised the other ones haven't complained. Um, oh, it's a string. That's fine. Um, I'm actually still shocked this hasn't. Yeah, so I'm getting syntax errors here because my engine is not on C17, so you can ignore that. Um, so just pster, right? right? And actually, I can literally just do this. Like, look at that. And then this goes away. That's it. Like, bam. That's super easy. Now it only exists in this scope of these guys. Only in this scope. And I don't have to remember to set it to null pointer, because here I have to set it to null pointer every time, right? So that's the real magic of that. It just cleans up all that garbage. Um, and switch. You can do it with switch as well. I mean, I could find an example probably where I have some switch statement that it would work. Here we go. Switch system type. Yeah, this is, in fact, this literally works, right? System type is literally only defined right here. So I could easily say, I could easily do this. And again, it's not going to show anything here because I'm in, uh, um, it's not going to show anything here because I'm not in C++17 land, but there it is, right? And then, of course, this will go away. So now system type only exists in the scope of this switch statement. And that's what we want. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, I hope that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do a few of these. I'll do some of my favorite ones, um, some of the ones that I'm most excited about, like the two that I just did. Um, okay. See you next time.